Hi, this is Esther with Discover Your Origins. In this video, I'm going to continue working on the children of Nancy Harmon and Martin Harrison Corley. And the previous video, I had worked on this Rebecca Martha Corley that I have currently showing, and we were able to fill out her profile and add some more sources. You can see her picture here that was on Ancestry. And I was also able to do quite a bit on finding her spouse because she didn't have a spouse at all on Family Search. And I uh, was able to add quite a bit. Um, even after I had finished recording my last video, I found quite a bit more about Charles Beasley. And I was able to connect him to his family and found that he had a previous spouse with children and then his hear his parents so that was really fun uh, project to to figure that out so this video we're gonna do rebecca's uh, sister callie corley and so we'll just move forward here and we'll we'll take a look now i had created her ancestry profile based off the 1880 census from the previous videos and her name was listed as Callie and born about 1873. Now in Family Search, she's got birth and death dates. She's got a spouse with lots of children. She's got 16 sources attached to her. I think the thing that is the most difficult about this, looking at this, is trying to figure out if Mary Catherine is the same as Callie Corley. I mean, even though somebody in Family Search has put the name Callie in the middle, it's not really clear that that is right. Callie could very well be a nickname, and that's what was recorded in the 1880 U.S. Census, and so the name Mary Catherine is very possible. And so we're going to just look through the source records and see if we can figure out if Mary Catherine and Callie Corley are the same person. Uh, we've got a birth year of 1873 here, which seems to match up with what's in the 1880 census, um, death year and stuff. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of look through that. I often will start in ancestry and going through the record hints there, but I also want to go through the record hints on family search. So I might do a little bit simultaneous here and back and forth just to kind of figure out uh, because I really would like to find a record where Mary Catherine says her parents are Martin Harrison Corley and Nancy Harmon. That might be a little pie in the sky because records and, and whatnot are, are not always consistent or predictable. They may not always provide the answers that you're wanting. Um, so we'll take a closer look. Um, one thing is that she dies in 1928 um, we'll need to look and see when Georgia begins to record um, death certificates because death certificates can sometimes list the parents. So we'll just kind of take a look. So I've got the record hints over on Ancestry pulled up. And so we'll go through that. I mean, this 1910 census, just as an example, says that her birth year is 1874 in Georgia, which is probably good. She's married. She's got children here um, and they're in Colquitt county georgia and that location matches up with later census records for the other family members so it would make sense you know if she stayed in the area with the other family uh, that mary catherine or mary c giles is the right person and that's the only thing that i'm having trouble with uh, with this particular analysis is that we don't really have records showing who her parents are. We're just kind of guessing. So here we've got Warren Giles, Mary C. Giles, and then several children. Uh, they were married 17 years, so we can approximate a marriage year. They have seven children, six living, so there's one child that's missing on this list. Mary C. is born in... It says Georgia, but there's this S before it, and I bet they're trying to say South Carolina because uh, that's not the case anywhere else. So I bet that's supposed to say South Carolina. All right. Um, yeah. So then we've got this headstone here. 
And we can take a little bit closer look at the Find a Grave Memorial. And sometimes people have linked a Find a Grave with parents and children. Looks like it's just her spouse and a couple of children. Let's look at the headstone. Catherine Coralie Giles. Okay. There's the birth and death dates on the stone. So that helps. But that's all that says. So uh, we'll, we'll go back here. Okay, we got 1920 census. So, so the social security record right here is for a child, Debbie. We've got a Civil War pension index or general index to pension files. Let's see what the years are for her spouse. 1869 to 1930. So he would not have served in the Civil War. So we can pretty much uh, know right off the bat to ignore that one because that's not even relevant. And then we've got the marriage records. I've already looked at the marriage record. It doesn't have any parent names on it. This 1900 census. Uh, yeah, this one. Well, should, we should look at. Okay, so it does say she was born in 1876. That. Uh, let's see. Her age is 24. The columns are a little bit off here. Let's see, 24. Um, married, seven years married. So she's married about 1893. And she has three children were born and three that are living. It would help if there were other family members on the census of um, other siblings of hers to kind of help tie tie her to that family all right there's nothing okay let me take a little more digging um and then these marriage records again like i said there wasn't anything that was helpful and then this death record is for her husband so None of the record hints on ancestry help substantiate the link uh, between daughter and parents. A lot of the sources on family search are the same. We've got census records, marriage. Some of these additional records are for her children. So, yeah, I could go through them, but uh, let's, I want to look at the research wiki and find out when death records were beginning to be recorded in Georgia. So we'll just do uh, Georgia genealogy, because if we could find a death certificate that names her parents that would be really helpful okay and we're in colkett georgia so let's go to colkett okay so death records began to be recorded in 1919 general compliance for births by 1928 and deaths by 1922 so there's a really good chance that there's a death record for her let's look okay this georgia death record collection only goes to 1927 georgia death certificates at georgia archives virtual vault that might be interesting and then there's this ancestry one there's non-indexed this family search one. Let's start with the family search one since we're in family search right now. And we want Mary. And, and she may not have gone by her full name. 
Uh, let's see. Her married name is Giles. And her death was 1928. Let's search. Okay. Oh, Mrs. Mary Giles. Could we have found it? Oh, okay. Well, Mary Giles of Moultrie, Georgia, married to Warren Giles. Birthplace, it says Georgia. Parents don't know. So, unfortunately, the death certificate is not going to help. But I want to attach this to her because uh, this is most likely her. Um, it matches the death date that's on the headstone. So I'm going to attach to the tree. And we'll select Mary Catherine. There we go. So we'll just go through the process of adding this. All right, there we go. Uh, we found her death certificate. That was quick. We found that really quick. That was amazing, actually. <laughs> All right, uh, perfect. So we'll just go back over here and you can see now there's 17 sources. If I come down to 1928. Okay, here's her death record right there. So we were able to at least find that death record. It doesn't help though with the overall question, is she a daughter? of Martin Harrison Corley and Nancy Rebecca Harmon. So we're kind of at a, a point here where we either accept what is in family search as what it is, or uh, we just leave it hanging, um, at least on my family, on my ancestry tree. It seems like it would be a match uh, there is one other thing we can look at, and it may take me a minute, but it's in the Family Search Research Wiki. So I may do some searching and then come back. So hang on. I'm going to look for an article, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So there's this article on England naming customs. So this does refer to England, but there isn't a comparable article for the United States, and a lot of... Um, People in the South followed the English naming pattern, not exactly, but it's there's similarities. But this page has a link to nicknames, and so that's what I want to look at. So here we go, female nicknames. Uh, so we're going to go look at that. And this page has a really long list, and I want to find Callie, if possible. Oh, they don't have a Callie. So you can do um, with your browser a control F and just type in Callie and see. So let's look up Catherine. Okay, so Kathy and Caddy are nicknames for Catherine. The Callie doesn't really seem to come into play here. So let's try Callie with a K. Nope. Okay, so we'll go back. All right, uh, there is a few different websites you can go at and look at uh, names. This behind the name one uh, website is really good. So I want to look up Cali. Okay. A diminutive of Carolyn, or sometimes of names beginning with Cal. So Catherine doesn't really doesn't really seem to 
fit. Hmm. If we look up Catherine. All right, Catherine doesn't have Callie as a potential nickname or variant. So does, does, I mean, it's not impossible. Um, I want to look at that 1880 U.S. Census again and look at her name. So let's go do that. Okay, so here's the family. Okay. Hmm. I wonder if that's Kathy and not Car Callie. Okay, so the T's are not getting crossed. So look up here at Martin. T is not getting crossed. The, that letter there has the a, a loop, though, like an L. So like Charlie, there's a loop there. There's this extra letter. Oh, I think let's um let's invert the colors and take a closer look. All right, here's Callie. Okay, it is Callie. It's very hard to see because that loop there is very, very faint. It's C A L L I E. So it is Callie. I'll switch that back. See, it's very hard to see. Um, the person's ink ran, a pen ran out of ink and re-inked right here. So Callie. All right. Hmm. It's still possible that that is a nickname for Mary Catherine. So we're kind of at this point where we accept the the what has been put in here as being true and one one thing that could help is going through each of these children of Mary Catherine and see if any of them say that their mother was Callie that would help as well so I didn't attach very many records you've seen me do that this was just me asking the question is she really a daughter of Martin Harrison Corley and Nancy Rebecca Harmon based on records because we want to have something that that supports the conclusion and there there isn't really anything somebody has made the connection and that's it and so we have to either say yes this is true and just move forward or we just kind of leave it hanging and waiting until we find that record which we've gone for the the most likely records you know we've got the census records we've got death records unless there's a family bible or church record it's going to be hard um you know if there was a letter or something that a family member wrote to her and said dear callie i mentions people's names you know it's going to be really hard to, uh to know for sure so i may just go ahead and say okay this is probably right based on the birth year matches, the birth location matches, the location of where she was living as an adult seems to be the same location as the siblings. So you could kind of say through indirect evidence that she's probably a match. And then just kind of go from there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, attach source records to my ancestry tree and then work through her children, uh, you know, for this week, next week or so, and see if I can't find uh, any more evidence. If not, we'll just say that that's right, and then we'll just move on. So sometimes you have to take a minute and just ask the questions and think about things and do a little bit of analysis before you, you move on. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, I hope that was helpful. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.